Hello Internet! Today we're going to be taking a look at Java, and specifically we're going to be starting Java from scratch. Uh, and so the basic idea of this is I want to create a, a Java class and be able to run it from a command line without needing any other tooling. Uh, so assuming you have Java installed, regardless of where you are, you should be able to actually get this to work. Uh, so that's sort of where we're starting, and I hope it's going to go really quickly uh, because it shouldn't be too complicated. I have an empty directory with nothing there. If I ls, there's nothing there. Uh, and you can see over here on the left, Visual Studio Code is saying, nope, there's nothing there. Uh, so first thing we need is just a class. So let's create test.java. Test the class is going to come later. <laughs> and so first thing we need is just a basic class. I have some snippets here that are going to automatically fill this in. So if I just do a Java test and Java main, uh, we will get this. Uh, and so we have a test called cla or a class called test, not, not the other way around. Uh, and then we have a public static void string uh, thing. And so this is our entry point for our program. In Java, this is sort of where you're going to enter. Uh, and so the idea here is as long as we have this main function, we should be able to invoke this from Java and get it to run. Uh, the problem is if I just run Java test, it's going to say could not find or load the main class test uh, because that class doesn't exist. Uh, Java works in stages, and so this is sort of our code. But in order to actually run this, we need to compile this into what's called bytecode. Uh, and so Java has this intermediary language that is actually the, the Java bytecode, and that's what as, is actually run when you run Java. Uh, and so this doesn't make sense to the computer. It doesn't know what this is. This is for us. Uh, and so what we need is something to compile it. We need a Java compiler. Uh, and so there's this command called Java C, which is going to compile it. Uh, this is a really basic example. Uh, and so I probably wouldn't recommend a lot of this for widespread use for like getting it beyond where we are here. But as like a basic introduction, I think this is going to cover sort of what you need. Uh, so we need a class, we need a main method, and then we need a compiler. Uh, and so we should get this if you install the JDK. You should get both Java and Java C installed in your computer. If you don't see uh, Java or Java C, uh, they may not exist in your path. Uh, and so I'm not going to go into that here, but that would be something that I would look into. If you've installed Java, it says it's installed, and you don't see either of these, try looking at your, your system path on either Linux or Windows or your Mac and updating that so that it does include the path to where you installed this. Uh, Anyway, after this, we need to compile our test.java uh, file. And so when we run this, it's going to output nothing. But we should see a class file. What? Hold on. Why didn't that work? Well, now I feel silly. Um, <laughs> we, oh, oh, I got it. Okay. Uh, so that scramble there is totally my fault. I didn't save. Uh, so we were trying to compile an empty file. So that should work now. There we go. Uh, so we get this class file and we're not going to see anything here. It's going to say, do you want to open it? Sure. Why not? This is what we see. Uh, so this is what is actually run on your computer, and it, it makes a lot less sense than, uh, than, than what the code did. Uh, and so this is sort of what we need in order to actually run this. And now, if we run Java and give it the name of our class, we should get nothing. Uh, we don't get that error anymore, which is great. The problem is our code does nothing. Uh, there's nothing there. And so what we need is we need something inside this main function to actually actually do something. Uh, and so let's do system out print line, uh, and we'll just do hello world. Uh, remember a semicolon, and we should be good. And so if we run Java test again, it doesn't work. Uh, and it doesn't work because we didn't compile it. So we're still, this hasn't changed. And so what we need to do is actually update that by recompiling. Uh, so we do Java C uh, test.java, and you saw that change which is perfect. You can even kind of see inside of here, there's some extra stuff here about strings and print lines and things like that. 
That's good. That means that it's working. You shouldn't ever need to look at this, by the way. I'm just pulling this up because it kind of shows you what's going on behind the scenes. This is not a good way to go about figuring out what's going on because this is confusing and not fun. Uh, so that can go away for now. We don't need that anymore. Uh, but now, if I rerun that Java test command, we will see hello world. Uh, and the way this is working is Java test is actually finding the class called test. Uh, and the way Java works is every file has to have the class inside of it named after the same file. Uh, and so if we were to name this test something else like foobar, I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, class foobar is public should be declared in a file named foobar.java. Uh, and so the way this works is if you see a test.class inside of here, that's a class. Uh, not all of them are going to have this main function in them, so that you can't just go and execute every class file you see. But in our case, we know that we compile our test class into a test.java or, or into a test.class file. Uh, and so we can actually go and find that and run it. Uh, and this can happen anywhere, so we can put this in a different directory or something and it should work. Uh, but that's pretty much getting it to run. Uh, and everything should be good. If we forget like a semicolon, for example, if we were to run Java test, Again, we're running the old code, so we're not going to see any errors, nothing's wrong. But if we run Java C uh, and try to compile this again, it's actually going to give us those compile errors. Uh, and Visual Studio Code and most text editors are going to, to know this as well. And so you can see it's already inserting this. The way these actually work is by invoking these compilers and actually doing some of this, or at least some of them work that way. Um, and so this way, we actually see a text-based thing. Uh, so if, assuming we don't have access to fancy stuff like that. This is what we get. And it says error semicolon expected system.out.println hello world on line seven. Uh, and so this is the name of the file, test.java. This is the line number. Can't really highlight a single character. Line seven. And then it gives us the error and then the output of the line. And it even has this nice caret pointing to exactly where that problem happened. Uh, this doesn't happen for everything. Uh, and some can get a lot more complicated than this, but for basic errors like semicolons, that's it's t it tends to be pretty good because everybody everybody forgets semicolons. <laughs> and so this is, <clears throat> I guess, the most basic thing we can do. Uh, we're printing things to the screen. There's no packages. We're not doing anything fancy. Uh, we're just printing things. And so it makes it relatively easy to actually run this kind of stuff and get it outputting somewhere nice. Uh, so we can actually recompile this and rerun it. Uh, re recompile and rerun it. There we go. Did those out of order. Uh, and now we get everything back. Uh, one thing I should point out is the string uh, args. What that is actually doing is print is giving you all of the arguments passed in. So we're doing Java test. We can actually pass additional arguments to actually modify our program. I'm not going to go super deep into this. But we can actually kind of take a little look at those. Uh, and so one thing I'm going to do, well, let's not use a debugger. Let, that, that seems like a, a bad, bad idea. Let's do for int i equals 0. Well, i is less than the args.length. And we'll increment i. So we'll just, we're just going to, whoa, hello. <laughs> Doing all sorts of things. Press the wrong button. Uh, okay. There we go. We're back. Uh, and so we're just going to iterate over all of those arguments and print them out on a separate line each time. Uh, and so since they're all strings, we can just pass them in and just index into that array and just do args i. Maybe maybe stepping here from compiling Java from, from scratch is a little bit much, but this is sort of hopefully going to cover like the entirety of what's on this page right now. Uh, and hopefully get all of that out. Uh, and so this is just going to iterate over everything in that array, one at a time. Um, from start to finish, it's just going to kind of go through and print out everything there. Uh, and so if we run Java test again, we'll see hello world. Uh, but I don't actually remember how to do this, but I think we can just do that. Oh, <laughs> we need to compile it, duh. Um, so let's run that. And now we get Java test foobar. 
Uh, and foobar is our parameter. And you can see that actually pop in as one of our arguments. Uh, and just so we kind of have a better idea, out.println, there are args.length uh, arguments like that. Cool. And so that's just going to tell us how many arguments there are, just so we kind of know. It should say one. Uh, and yeah, there are one arguments, and that argument is foobar. And so this is kind of handy. Like if you want to open a file, for example, you can provide that file as an option. Uh, but I'm not going to go into all of the use cases for this or how to, how to really take advantage of this. That's not really the point. Um, but that's just part of the main function. Uh, the important parts of the main function are that it's public, that it's static, that it returns a void, uh, which just means nothing. There's no return value. Uh, so if we tried to like return one here, it's not going to like that at all because we aren't returning anything. Uh, and that it has the name main. Those are sort of the main, <laughs> main things that you need to actually cover here. Uh, and then the string arguments uh, is just sort of a way of passing all of those in. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I think, I think we've pretty much covered it. Uh, so yeah. No, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, so Java C, the name of the class, or, or the name of the Java file you want to compile, that will create in the same directory that your current in your working directory, wherever you are in your terminal, it's going to create a test.class, uh, the name of the class dot class. And that's actually going to be the representation of your class. Once you have that, you can run it using the Java command. Uh, and so, yeah. I think that that mostly covers it. If there's questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, if there, if you want to chat and kind of, kind of discuss this more, maybe consider joining our Discord. There's a link in the description. Uh, and yeah, that's it. If you like the video, consider subscribing or giving it a thumbs up and letting me know what you think. Uh, but that's it. So until next time, see you internet.